I think one of the real challenges uh, of outdoor play is other people's perception of the dangers. Uh, and we started doing a risk benefit analysis rather than a strict risk assessment. So what are the benefits to children of being outside? Or put it the other way, what are the risks of them not being outside? So we wanted to give the children that chance to learn through their own mistakes. And yes, there will be a few more cuts and grazes, but the children who can climb up a tree explain to the others you don't go on wee branches like this, you need a big branch and you need to pull on it, make sure it will hold your weight. So they actually are performing their risk assessment. So we are building resilience in these children. And I think as people see that, then they can see that actually this is a positive thing to do. Well, we normally play there, make fires, we roast brioches, bagels, marshmallows. There is a concern often by services that the care inspectorate is really concerned with risk assessment and that we will really frown on services that do let children take risks. But that's not the case. In this service, we have observed that um, the staff really do take account of risk, but they allow children to take a certain amount of risk, but show them the dangers, for example, the dangers of lighting fires and how um, they need to keep themselves safe, the dangers of using tools, and all these things are closely monitored and the children are supported so that they can take some risks, but in a safe way. We uh, lighted the fire, we chopped the wood, we toasted marshmallows, we went to see our dens, um, we play horses, we play dens, we play fairies, yeah, and we play, what was the other thing? Horses, fairies, toothy game, yeah, we play lots of games. Jack Frost game, I mean, that's the fairy game. What we're trying to reproduce out there is the sort of environment that people of my generation took for granted. Because a lot of the time now, because children are s viewed as being so much more at risk, they live quite structured lives. Our job is to be the unstructured space, but in a, to be kind of the positive unstructured space. So if you see children doing something and you think, hey, some drain pipes would improve that situation, you make sure the drain pipes are there. We, I built a den with my friend Finn, Jocelyn, Rub, Ruby and um, me, Finn, Jocelyn and Ruby and we put up hammocks. Finn was the highest but he fell into nettles which was very funny and we had our ones low because we didn't want to do that. Um, the best thing we do in all sorts is get children together, give them the opportunity to have fun to test themselves, to uh, learn new skills, um, and hopefully to build resilience that will take them into adulthood. A lot of the business about being outside and getting dirty is that parents don't necessarily want children getting dirty in their own clothes or in their own house. Actually, they're quite happy if we do it with our wetsuits on and then the underlying child goes home um, clean or maybe in need of a bath, but at least the mess isn't in the parents' house. So I think once they came to see that, the parents have been very supportive. We have a situation in which children can roam. It's a limited space, but they can roam within a physical environment, uh, and they can roam in the imaginative environment, because the crucial thing is that they have to have their space, and this is their space.